Hey guys, today I've got another video for you on numerical methods and in this video you're going to learn how to approximate roots using the newton raphson method. And at the end of the video I'm going to show you how you can save yourself a lot of time in this method using a simple calculator trick. So here we have a typical problem involving the newton raphson method. So the equation x to the power 3 over 2 minus e to the minus x plus 1 over the square root of x minus 2 equals 0 has a root between 1.2 and 1.3. Taking x naught to equal 1.2, find a third approximation to four decimal places using the newton raphson method. So let's remind ourselves of the newton raphson formula, xn plus 1 equals xn minus f of xn divided by f prime of xn. So what is f of x? Well, whenever we're using the newton raphson method, we're solving an equation of the form f of x equals 0, and therefore f of x is everything on the left-hand side of this equation. So f of x is x to the power 3 over 2 minus e to the minus x, plus 1 over the square root of x minus 2. That's f of x. And in order to find f prime of x, we just differentiate f of x. So f prime of x is equal to 3 over 2 x to the half. The derivative of minus e to the minus x is minus e to the minus x times the inner derivative, which is minus 1. And so we get plus e to the minus x. The derivative of 1 over the square root of x is the derivative of x to the minus a half. So we get minus a half x to the minus 3 over 2. And the derivative of a constant is just 0. So now we have f of x and we have f prime of x. So we're now ready to plug in our initial approximation x naught equals 1.2. But it's worth mentioning that if we're not given an initial prox approximation, then it's usually a safe bet to make the first approximation one of the bounds of the interval. So 1.2 and 1.3 is the interval, and we've been told to use 1.2. So in order to find the third approximation, we're going to need to find the second approximation first. So x1 equals x0 minus f of x0 over f prime of x0. And now let's plug in what we know. So x1 is equal to 1.2 minus f of 1.2. So what is f of 1.2? Well, it's this equation here, uh, but where x is 1.2. So minus 1.2 to the power 3 over 2 minus e to the minus 1.2 plus 1 over the square root of 1.2 minus 2. And all of that is divided by f prime of 1.2. So we're now plugging 1.2 into f prime of x. So 3 over 2 times 1.2 to the half plus e to the minus 1.2 minus the half times 1.2 to the minus 3 over 2. And if you plug that in your calculator, that should give you a value for x1 being 1.24718 and so on. Now at this point we probably shouldn't round because we're trying to find the third approximation and so instead of rounding let's plug this into our equation. So we're replacing 1.2 with 1.24718 and to save us a bit of time um, that comes out as 1.2466 to four decimal places. I'd now like to show you guys what is happening from a graphical perspective when we use the newton raphson formula. And I also want to show you what can happen when we don't choose our starting value of x carefully. So here we have the graph of y equals f of x. And remember f of x is this long complicated function, which probably you wouldn't be expected to sketch anyway. But we're just doing this to illustrate what is happening. We begin the newton raphson procedure by either being given a starting value of x or by choosing one. And then in order to find the next value of x, 
you want to draw a vertical line from x0 to the curve. And then at the point where it hits the curve, you want to draw a tangent at that point. And then the next value of x is given by the point where this tangent intersects the x axis. Then you want to repeat the process with your new value of x. And as you can see from this diagram, this can converge to the root very quickly. Now consider what would happen if we chose a value of x closer to the turning point. Then what we notice is that the tangent is flatter and so it intersects the x-axis at a point much further away from the root. And therefore as a result, the newton raphson method is going to converge much more slowly when we choose a value of x closer to the turning point. And if we take it one step further and choose the exact value of x for which f of x has a turning point, then what we see is that the tangent is completely horizontal. And so because it's parallel to the x-axis, it's never going to intersect the x-axis, and so it's never going to converge. And so what we can deduce is that the newton raphson method fails when we pick a value for x which is at a turning point. And if we look at the newton raphson formula again, this makes sense because turning points occur when the first derivative is zero, and f prime of x represents the first derivative, and if f prime of x was zero, then we'd have zero in the denominator. And so both the graph and the formula are telling us that we can't use this method on a stationary point. As promised, I'm now going to show you a neat calculator trick that will save you some time when you're using this method. So at this stage right here, instead of typing 1.2 every time we saw an x, instead what I want you to do is I want you to type in your calculator the number 1.2 and then press equals so that it stores 1.2 as answer. And now you can type the exact same equation and type answer every time you see an x. And when you press equals, that's going to give you the same number that we got last time. But the difference is this number now is saved as the new answer. And so in order to get to the next approximation, all you need to do is just press equals and it will immediately give you x2 without having to replace all the 1.2s with the 1.24718s. And in fact, you can do this as many times as you like to get as many approximations as you need. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around. I hope you learned something new from the video. Uh, and comment down below what video you want me to make next and I'll see you next time.